the search for our beginning could lead to our end. Here's your look at the NECA toys. This is the Prometheus Dr. Elizabeth Shaw. Thanks to her on-world work, Dr. Elizabeth Shaw has been contracted by Whalen Corporation to further her archaeological research regarding the origins of mankind aboard the Prometheus. Her faith-based approach to science may be unorthodox, but her contribution to the mission is invaluable. Before we get a closer look at Dr. Elizabeth Shaw, the first thing we're going to do is figure out how tall the figure stands. Yes, truth be told, this is a figure that's been around for a while. I just never got around to reviewing it. I had a little extra time to spare due to the circumstances that is uh, presented in front of us right now. So I had a little extra hand time on my hands. Decided to have a look at this figure finally. If you're in the market of picking these ones up for yourself, good luck. Prometheus figures are some of the more expensive things to acquire now from NECA Toys. So happy hunting and good luck. In the meantime, though, if you are looking to pick up this figure and you want to know how tall she is, I can at least provide that to you guys. 6.7 inches in height is Dr. Elizabeth Shaw. And that in centimeters, one more time, one more time, there we go, 17 centimeters tall is the figure. Looking at the figure's accessories, we'll first run through, starting with the axe here. It is a little jarring of an axe to see such a distinct curved shape to it. I assure you, that's the way it's supposed to look. It really doesn't look as bad when you've got it being held in both of her hands. If you're having it just holding in one hand, then yeah, it does look a little awkward with such a, like I said, real notable curve to it. The actual stem or handle of the axe is done starting first in black, a little bit of silver on the end there, then makes its way to kind of a bleached wood coloring. You can see there's a nice texturing that's done to it. I think it's more painted than anything else. And then you've got a nice gunmetal handle or head to the axe with just the bottom edge here, the sharpened edge being a painted silver. It's a nice looking axe. And again, being that she doesn't have really a lot of accessories to spare, it's going to be obviously the thing I'm going to be displaying the figure with. Next, moving along our ways here, she does also come included with the head of David. David actually, uh, of course, I suppose it's some spoilers. We're going to try to go spoiler free in this review, but there's the head of David, certainly at the, at the, uh, with the remains of him down below. It's a nice detailed looking figure, and really to the credit of NECA Toys, the fact that they would actually even articulate David's head for something that has no body, literally no body, I'm here all night. It's nice, again, to see the fact that they would actually have it articulated. I mean, that's a decent likeness for how old these figures are. Not bad at all. Uh, the paintwork done is really nice, especially on the underside here, where you can see the spinal cord there of David. Just again, a really nice detailed piece. Uh, the David also comes included, or David was released on his own in the suit also as well. So if you maybe perhaps want your David a little bit more established, I guess, with a body, you can also have picked up the David that comes included while in this sort of similar space suit. Speaking of space suits, Shaw also comes included with her helmet. The helmet has some nice detailing done to it with some gold down along, just striped along the back section here. I thought actually that the dome could separate from itself because I didn't think there was going to be enough clearance to fit it around Shaw's head. Sure enough, it does, but you just sort of have to navigate. Yeah, yeah, don't worry. I'll talk about that in a second. She does also come included with this. If you do pick up this figure for yourself brand new, maybe you're not going to be in the market of uh, opening these because they are rather expensive. Uh, you... She does come with this, which I think is just a little light piece that goes along the top of the helmet. I really do ask the question why this couldn't have simply just been attached in the first place. I have dropped this probably about five times now already. I get the fact that it does have posability to it, but I think ultimately I'm just going to glue that in place because I do not want to lose this. Also, it happens if I put it the right way. There we go. Uh, like I said, I certainly don't want to lose this. I mean, I get predators get plasma casters that usually are separate pieces they go on to the shoulder but this is taking that to the next level it's way too small i'm definitely going to have to glue that in place because i definitely don't want to drop that and misplace it i mean without it all you're really seeing is a slot located on the back there from the front you would be none the wiser unless you watch this review and this guy has just told you that there's supposed to be something on the top there 
The coloring of the dome, I mean, they kept it just to a clear plastic. It doesn't distort things too much. Well, I suppose I've talked too much about it. Let me just show you what I'm going to be doing here. So all I really have to do is take this and navigate this over Shaw's head. Again, I didn't think it was going to fit initially, thinking I had to remove it and separate it into two halves. But no, it does fit over her head. Her hair can be a little troublesome on both sides, but like I said, it just is a case of wiggling that on and then eventually it snaps in place. Still though, despite the fact that it does go over top of her head, I probably wouldn't want to be doing this too frequently, just for the risk that I feel like I'd be scraping and rubbing the paint on both sides on her hair. The dome, for comparing it to the screen used model, of course, when she is wearing the helmet, I feel like it doesn't sit as high up on her head. I feel like it's a little bit lower, maybe to about here. But still, it's a nice looking dome. At least the fact that they include a helmet is something that if you want to display it with the dome, you can certainly do that. Or sans le domes, you can certainly do that also as well. Just again, a nice way to incorporate it. Could it have been incorporated and added a little bit differently so I didn't have to run the risk of rubbing, again, the little sides of her hair? Probably but it still would be something that you'd have to fight with. Even if this was split right here, right along this seam line, the biggest obstacle is not so much this front section anyways, it's this back area. It's the part that has to fit over her hair. It's not the front of the dome that's the issue at all. So again, like you just gotta be careful and like I said, fit that over the top. It fits into those little slots. There's one on both sides, there and there, and there and there. And then that, like I said, just fits it over top like so. I mean, it, again, it's a good look. A likely, I think, display Shaw probably without it, the helmet, because I think the head sculpt is really good, and even though it's distorted only slightly, you can still see through and make out Shaw's face. Again, it's just a little bit more of a, almost an optical mirror effect. It has a little bit of a distortion to it when you tilt it back and forth. Or, like I said, I'll just probably display, I'll probably just display the helmet in her hand or something along those lines. So we'll just move those out of the way and just pray that we don't lose this piece. Now that I've said that, of course, we're going to just put that to the side. And we'll look at Shaw. Uh, Shaw's a nice looking figure. Um, there is also a secondary slot here on the side. I just want to draw your attention to that this also can fit here too. I'm guessing the plan is that you can actually put it in both places if you wanted to. You can either put it on the top of the helmet, which has that same shape of slot, or you can put it onto the side there as well. Either case though, whatever way and whatever place you decide to put it, Decide, I would think, immediately where you're going to put it and then put glue down. So again, it's just not going to fall off. Again, that being said, I'm going to put it to the side and I'm probably going to be looking at the entire, the rest of this review to ensure that it's not going to get rolled off somewhere and certainly get lost. That being said, let's look at the head portrait here of Elizabeth Shaw. A nice, nice looking overall head sculpt. I think maybe one thing I would probably say, not the most accurate to the film, is I feel like the coloring of the hair is too dark. Maybe it could have been pulled back a little bit, uh, giving a more lighter hair that she has, I think, in the film. It's not completely a, a stark, light brown, but I do feel like it's a little bit, certainly lighter than what's being conveyed here in the figure. The figure definitely has more dark hair than anything else. The face portrait is pretty good. The likeness, I think, is captured there. Her eyes seem a bit lost. I don't know what's necessarily missing to them. Maybe they needed to add a little bit of extra white. I'm thinking that might be the issue. If you look at the eyeballs, they're almost identical in color to the rest of the skin. Because of that, the eyes, I feel, don't stand out. They feel almost like they get lost amongst the coloring of the rest of the skin. If they had just made those eyeballs a little whiter, I think that's where you would see those eyes pop a lot more than what they actually are. But overall, I'm pretty happy with the head sculpts. It's close enough, and based on the time frame of when these figures were first released, I think NECA Toys did a pretty good job on a likeness of Elizabeth Shaw. The rest of the suit, of course, is the space suit worn by the crew of the Prometheus, and it's this really nice metallic blue coloring. I mean, you really don't experience how nice that blue is until you first see it in hand, or hopefully videos like this are clear enough that you can really see. That's a very cool color that they used. It's almost got like a bit of a glitterness to it as well, that if you slightly tip it to the light, uh, maybe you can see it, I don't know. But you can see there's a li little bit of almost like a little bit of glitter or something that's bouncing off of that blue. The blue coupled with the little striped panels of orange really do make a lot of things stand out on this particular suit. Now, of course, what I'm listing are all things that were based on the costume designs in the film. NECA simply has just sucked that from the film. 
and made it into a 7-inch format figure. But I think it works pretty good. I mean, it looks like it does in the film. It, the colorings are just as bright and vibrant. I mean, you can see all the details done on the back there. The backpack there as well. Uh, she also has the little marking uh, patch there, the badge there on the side of her sleeve. And she also has some additional details there on the front. So nothing really feels lost when you're looking at this and then you're sourcing it back to the original film that the figure is based from. They seem to hit all the markers. Again, I really like the panel lining of the orange. It's really quite clean and doesn't seem like it has a lot of bleed to it. I'm looking at the side, I'm looking at the back. There are like a few little areas, like this section right here, I don't know, I'm drawing your attention to or behind, kind of looks like there's this big splotchy patch of paint. It's the only place that I've seen really that has a standout flaw to it. Maybe over here as well, it seems like really around Shaw's behind seems to be where the paint has been flawed the most, but you don't really see it again when you're looking at it from the front. The key, though, is the sculpt of the head, and the key is the paint for the rest of the overall figure. And I think from that standpoint, they really check all those boxes off rather nicely. It so happens also that this is a very similar blue to the backdrop that I currently use. I find blue is a really soft, inviting color, and that's one of the reasons why I specifically use it for my reviews, so that you can still see a lot of the details stand out, nothing feels washed, nothing feels bleached out of the review. And one of the more reasonings why I went with blue in case you guys were curious. Uh, for the figure's articulation, let's go ahead and run through that right now. Her head rotates all the way around, but sort of the same problem, it comes back to her hair, really. The hair really prevents moving the head back and forth. Yeah, you can move it up and down, you can still rock it back and forth, but beyond this point is where I feel like everything rubs up against itself. I mean, some would use the argument, why would you want to rotate Shaw's head around in the first place? But I will say it is tight quarters when you are moving the head back and forth. These side flaps aren't the softest of plastic. There's a little bit of give to it. But again, when you are rotating this back and forth, the same problem that I had with causing what I feel down the road could be chips off the paint. Something you want to also be careful of when it comes to Shaw's head. When you are rotating it back and forth here, the casualty, I think, in all of this will be the chin. It's probably going to start seeing a little bit of paint wear off, so I want to be careful of that. The arms hinge outward, and what they've actually done is they've uh, flapped the shoulder pieces here as a separate piece. So at least when you are moving the arms out, you can move them at about, a, about an almost 90 degree angle, and those shoulder pieces stay completely out of the way. I like that. You can move the arms forward, you can move the arms back, you can bend at the elbow and rotate the forearms back and forth. These are still during a time period where NECA was putting a lot of articulation in their figures. I really don't want to even say like these are old figures, not considerably old. Um, I think they were around, what, 2017 or so, so probably about three years old, give or take. Upper torso ball joint, she has a lower torso ball joint as well, legs split out. They go forward, they go back, uh, she has a swivel on the top cut of the thigh single hinge knee, which also allows the lower leg to rotate, and she does also have foot articulation with ankle pivots. You know, initially I also did think that Shaw seemed short. Proportionately, the top of her torso isn't so much the issue, but I thought like the lower half uh, seemed too short, uh, kind of throughout her proportions. But then she's not a very tall character in the film either, so I guess proportionately she's not that bad at all to her film counterpart. Again, the nice inclusion is the fact that they also touched up and added a, uh, you know, a headless or bodiless David. As a nice touch as, as well, the fact that this actually does have posability to it. And that's really a nice touch. Whether you decide to display her with or without the helmet, I still feel like I'm kind of moving closer towards the idea of displaying her without the helmet. She overall is a nice looking Dr. Dr. Elizabeth Shaw, who of course appears in the Prometheus film. Originally marketed as the film that really was going to answer the questions that us Alien fans had as to what led up to the events of the first film, Prometheus eventually did come to theaters. And while it didn't give us the direct answers we were hoping for, it left us more asking questions than anything else. I felt personally between Prometheus and Covenant, instead of taking what I thought was a direct approach from point A to point B, explaining the backstory of the Xenomorphs and what led to the engineer being there in the first Alien film, 
Instead, we had all these evolutionary stages of the xenomorph. It didn't start as a xenomorph. It started as something else. And like I said, it, it matured and advanced through the two films. Prometheus and Covenant were convoluted and really bogged down with unnecessary backstory. I really don't even think when it's all said and done. A xenomorph needs a lot of backstory. I just wanted to know what led up to the original events of Alien. And I never really got that. Still, despite that, you have notable characters. I think the actors, for the most part, for both Prometheus and Covenant were solid. The designs were good, and if you can suspend the idea that they, the text certainly looks a little bit more futuristic than what we would see with both Alien and Aliens, it's still an enjoyable film, both Prometheus and Covenant, to sit down with a bucket of popcorn and watch. NECA Toys, of course, gave us a run of Prometheus figures, which unfortunately now are, have skyrocketed in prices. If you don't believe me, simply just check on eBay and you can see some of the prices going for a lot of these Prometheus figures. I picked up a couple of these actually at my local comic book store years ago, and I just never got around to reviewing it. Chalk it up to mostly to the fact that I put it on the back burner. And apparently I just let that sit on the back burner while I was working on other things. But, but with a little bit of extra time now on these five digits of mine on both hands, I felt it was a prime time to go back and have a look at some of these figures that, again, I had the intended plan to review a long time ago and simply just never got around to it. Dr. Elizabeth Shaw does look like her film counterpart. She seemed initially a little too short, short certainly in the legs. But I think the more I'm looking at the figure, I'm not bothered at all by it. I like the fact also she gets the head of David. And she does come with a helmet that does very snugly fit over top of her head. Be careful of the paint. She also comes included with an axe and a very nuisance little light attachment that goes both to her shoulder and to the top of the helmet. Stressing this to you guys, make sure you don't lose that. Decide, I feel, which way you want to be putting it on her and then just glue it in place. Call it a day. You don't have to worry about losing it. But again, overall, Dr. Elizabeth Shaw is a nice figure. It took me so long to finally get her reviewed, but I think hopefully it's traded off to what I feel is a decent looking figure that I can finally put on display. Will it look a little awkward to be putting it, say, with the likes of the original Alien cast? Possibly, yes, but still I'm looking forward to putting her on display. And I'll probably just put her on display with David's head in her hand, kind of like what I'm doing here in Final Looks. Did you manage to pick up any of the original Prometheus figures? Good luck if you've kept them still sealed in the packaging. You could probably sell those off and get yourself a brand new house. I'm just kidding, but the prices certainly have skyrocketed on these. If you have picked them up, let me know down below in the comments section or based on the review that you've seen here of Elizabeth Shaw, let me know down below in the comments section what you guys think of the figure. And while we have a little bit of extra time on our hands during right now what's going on in the world, I'm going to see if maybe I can go back and re-review or review some of the things that I've never got a chance to review in the past. So with things looking forward and brighter, uh, hopefully you guys will be seeing a bunch of newer reviews, of course, of some of the stuff that's available in stores right now. And there'll be, of course, the sprinkling and uh, of the older stuff, some of the older figures, like I said, I've never got around to reviewing. So there should be the best of both worlds. The key, though, is if you are new to this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, turn the bell notification on and stay tuned because there's going to be a whole lot of videos coming your way. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.